Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm delighted to say uh, we've got a packed show for you today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you can join the football family. And we've got a packed couch as well. Uh, Alan Off, Alison McConnell and Tam McManus here with me. And if you want to, uh, to stay up to date with all the latest breaking football news, you can download our app and you can watch the programme on that as well. Uh, quite a few people have been sending us pics um, of them watching the programme on the, the big telly as well as a guy with a 54 inch screen Tam had you and I uh, on the screen on Saturday watching the scores coming in I, I was talking about wrinkles or something was he was yeah he was he was talking about you yeah um, but no I, my mum and dad watching this big screen I know Ruffy Disney know how to do it. Yeah. He watches it on the phone, but if you go into YouTube on the app, you can put it on your big telly, Ruffy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, <laughs> amazingly, uh, of the stats, <laughs> Ruffy, uh, we saw that a lot of people are actually watching it on the television, so that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. as I say, most of the guys are, are meet up in my local uh, supermarket. Uh, they watch it on the telly as well, because a lot of them in that my area are shift workers yeah. down at the Marks and Spencers big factory, and that's the only chance to get to watch it. So they're all on it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, the good news is, uh, for some of the people who are slightly over the age of uh, 50 uh, who are watching the programme, uh, Ruffy is wearing stuff from the 1950s can today. I, can we just talk, quickly talk about his outfit? It's, yeah. uh, it's awful. Yeah. What is that jumper? Mustard, cream trousers, and his sketches that he wears every day. I'm yeah. going to have to look at some designers. Honestly, <laughs> you really are. He's, getting, he's getting loads of money <laughs> in his <laughs> dresses like Trump. I'm going to come in with something outrageous. Yeah, uh, something outrageous. You're doing well at the moment. You're on a great run. Um, although, you know, my apologies to anyone who listens to the podcast because uh, the apart from anything else you can't see what he's wearing um, but you will get obviously interference even the phone is calling time <laughs> on your gear <laughs> did you get, did you get that? that? Did I you got get it yesterday playing <laughs> golf yeah everybody's right. panicking um, in case there was a nuclear war but uh, nevertheless um, we've got lots to talk about of course uh, Celtic extend the lead at the top of the table with the uh, point that they gained against Motherwell I don't think too many people thought about that on the Saturday because up at Petaudry Aberdeen defeated Rangers they've waited a long time and boy did they enjoy it that allowed Celtic to extend their advantage give us your thoughts on that and then an exclusive one-to-one -one with Neil Lennon the former Celtic manager uh, told me that Barry Robson should get the job on a permanent basis what more can the Aberdeen interim boss do uh, to get that job on a full-time basis you can give us your thoughts on that we'll hear from Neil Lennon and you can get the full interview which I have to say is a very good listen indeed Neil Lennon talking about the pain of being sacked as the manager at Celtic, of course, the highs of Ammonio and Nicosia. It looks back at 20 years ago when Celtic were heading towards Seville <laughs> in the UEFA Cup final and he gives us his thoughts on the semi-final coming up between Celtic and Rangers at Hamden at the weekend. It's well worth listening to 9 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday if you want to listen to that. Um, of course, I don't think anybody would have predicted what was going to happen up at Petaudry, but uh, boy, Aberdeen really put in a fight, Alison. Yeah, I think so. I thought Rangers were desperately poor without taking anything away from Aberdeen's performance. I thought Rangers were very static. There's so little genuine creativity. I think uh, Liam, Sco Sc Liam Scales will never score another goal like that in his life. I don't think, uh, I think uh, very clearly a, a, a <laughs> an attempted cross. Uh, but I thought Aberdeen were worth the points. I thought... Um, Barry Robson's team were organised, they were resilient, uh, they were tactically aware. I think um, I think he's done a fantastic job uh, in the very short time that he's been there. But I think for Rangers, I think a massive rebuild is necessary this summer. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, with that in mind, um, we mentioned Neil Lennon. Neil Lennon was speaking to us in, in an exclusive one-to-one -one, and he reckons that, um, well, Barry, Fair, uh, Barry Robson, I beg your pardon, should get that job on a permanent basis. And we'll come back to that in just a second. Neil Lennon is the topic of our quiz question um, as well. And I was just wondering, as a player and a manager, Ruffy, as the quiz question comes in, how many trophies has Neil Lennon won as player and manager at Celtic? Do you want to have a guess? Oh, uh, 22. Ali? I'm going to say 24. 24. 20. 20. Okay, there you are. Well, he's just, uh, he's, he's just having a wee, he's just, he's hedging his bets there. Is is he? I'm thinking if you're going, is it closest? Because I'm thinking if I'm low. 
Yeah, I'm going to be you may get there. Get you may, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, anyway, that's your, that's your quiz question. Um, as far as uh, the game itself, um, here's here's what Neil Lennon had to say about Barry Robson. And if Rangers had gone one and up, they probably would have gone to win the game comfortably. But kudos to Barry. You know, I think that's three or four or five wins in a row now. He's done a brilliant job in turning things around for Aberdeen, and um, you know he's. Making a fantastic audition for the job. Yeah, is there any way they can not give him it? Do you, well, think, do you yeah, think they should give him it I now? Think they should, yeah. I really do. I don't know if anyone could come in and do a better job than what Barry's done. And he's got good staff there now with Steve Agney and, and Liam Fox. I think, you know, interim job can be difficult or it can be easy. There's no pressure on you, Pete. And you, you become friends with all the players when you get the job permanently things change a little bit but I think Barry's mature enough and he's been at Aberdeen long enough to know the culture of the club the environment of the club and what's required of the club and we're seeing that now yeah um, <coughs> two nothing against yeah. Rangers and when you look at it seven consecutive wins he's, he's been unbelievable in, in what he's done yeah and, and I agree with, with Neil now I think you, you see the reaction of the Aberdeen supporters uh, that's good enough to get the job you know you, every one of them were just it was an unbelievable day for them. I agree with Neil Rangers should have had the game done and dusted in the first half. Chances they had, goalkeeper did a few saves, but then after that, that old problem came back for Rangers. As soon as they went one nothing down, people started to hide. Uh, can't cope with the pressure of being behind in a game, and it's not the first time that's happened at Rangers. Yeah, um, and uh, as far as the goals conceded, Michael Beale reckons that uh, one of them shouldn't have stood. I think that I think it's a foul when we break out, but we stop a little bit. The ball goes wide, I expect us to defend the far post. We've got 2v1 at the far post and we don't. And then we find ourselves 2-0 down and we're, we're now really chasing. And as I say, again, we put Rabi in front of the goalkeeper. Tav has a chance from six or seven yards out. Keeper makes a good save. So over the game today, it was about who imposed their style on each other, on the other team more. I still think for 70% of the game, we were the team that imposed the style, but you have to take your chances. Well, you can't argue with them on that. They had a lot of possession. I mean, at one point, before Scales scored the fluke goal, Tom, I'm looking, I'm thinking to myself, it's only a matter of time, but they just seem to squander chance after chance. Yeah, I think first half they were probably the better team. They created the better chances. Um, obviously, Aberdeen got ahead with a freak goal, but even when Aberdeen went 2-0 up, you know, Rangers had chances to score. You know, keep with a couple of good saves, but if they got, the, if they got one back to 2-1, then we've seen before with Aberdeen, maybe it's a different, different Aberdeen now, but they crumbled the last time. So, yeah, they never took their chances, but I, I thought they were poor. I agree with Alison. She spoke about earlier. I thought Rangers were poor on the day. I don't think they defended well. I think Aberdeen could have added to the lead late on. I, I think Mally Watkins missed a great chance at the end to make it 3-0. So, listen, he's got a lot of work to do um, before the, the big game next week because it's... We've spoken about it in the show so many times. It's, it's now a one-game season uh, for Rangers. They need to win next week or else their, their season's done. Yeah, there's a lot of people maybe uh, disenchanted with uh, Michael Beale, but I, I, again, I think the board will have to take the broader uh, context of what's happening here, which is quite simply, it's still not his team. There's not any changes. He's got, he's got to change that side, and it's Michael Beale's team. Yeah, and I think he alluded to that in the full post-match press conference, if you listen to it in its entirety. I think he, he referenced that, that he's been judged in a team that's not entirely his own. However... The problem for him now is what are the finances around Ariba? <coughs> what can he, what can he do? What's he going to have to work with? And also, I think you have a question mark up until now. It may change this weekend, but you have a question mark up until now because his team haven't delivered in any big game where, that he's overseen yet. So if you think there've been two games against Celtic, that game up at Petardry against Aberdeen, these are the games that you you want to see a, a reaction and a performance. And I think the longer that goes then the harder it gets for him. I think uh, it does build up a kind of narrative around him and around the team. Whether that's fair or not is an entirely different question. However, the reality of football is that you have to be seen to perform and you have to get a tune out of the players that you've got, as Barry Robson has done at Aberdeen with the same team that were, what, 11 points <laughs> behind Hearts at one stage? Well, they were complimentary towards him when he was uh, getting a regular tune out of that side that he inherited, roughly, albeit that they just can't seem to get um, you know that victory that they crave over Celtic mm -hmm. um, but I still think long term they've got to look and say build your own team yeah. get get that team together I just wonder Ruffy on the basis of what Tam and Ali were saying there if 
it really starts to intensify to the silly stage again if Celtic were to win in, uh, on Sunday. Yeah, well, you know, because then all the questions will start getting asked again. He's already come out and said, uh, hinted that he's got a budget to play with. And now, and now the, I think the, the fans just now will buy into that. But after, if Celtic beat them, then it's going to be, what is your budget? Who are you start, going to start bringing here? What What is the finances like? You know, these are all the questions will get asked, you know. And he, he's hung on to the good run that he's had where he's been beating all the teams that Celtic have been beating. And we've already said on this show, it is quite a poor league. You know, so they should be winning all these games. But as Alison said, it's the big games the supporters want to win. They want to, they want a trophy. That that keeps coming up all the time. A trophy, a trophy, a trophy. You know, and then this is his last chance at the weekend. So he really has to come up with the goods. Yeah, um, of course, Barry Robson deserves all the praise that's coming his way. And so the Aberdeen players. And apparently, um, even the Aberdeen ball boys, according to the Dons manager. It's not going to be easy. Probably we're going to have to go to Hearts, aren't we? We'll be three away games we're looking at, as usual, so everybody's against us again. <laughs> so what do we need to do? We need to fight back. Um, and it is, and, and the referee for the first time, is it 30 years I've been in football, professional football, is it 30 or 20, is it? The first time I've heard a referee come over and speak about, can you tell the ball boys to hurry up? 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> Didn't get that one. Yeah, usually, 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 <laughs> if, Aberde if Aberdeen were trying to get back into a game, there was about thirty balls yeah, that yeah. Fergie would get them on, yeah. and then if they were winning, suddenly the balls were quickly over into the into the river. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I think that's 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 a bit of a part of the game now. I think that you look at uh, particularly Celtic and Postecoglou when the ball goes out the park, the ball boys are all tuned in, ball straight into the Celtic players' hand for a quick throw, or a quick corner. Um, and it was probably the same at Aberdeen. They have probably warned if, if, you're, if Aberdeen are winning, take your, <laughs> take your time. And if they're not winning, get the ball back on quickly. Uh -huh. And that's just that's just part of football. So maybe the referee was was getting a wee bit annoyed with it. But surely the referee's got more other things to concentrate on than ball boys. I'm yeah. sure the Celtic supporters have got balls in there as well as the ball boys. The ball yeah. boys are slow, they're supporters from balls. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, listen, uh, apart from anything else, uh, Aberdeen deserve great credit for winning the game. I think the more purest Aberdeen fans will look at the way they battled you know they, they hung in there they were like a boxer on the ropes and then when they got that little bit of fortune they grasped it and then built on it with, the, with a great Miofsky goal but Barry Robson will know there's such a lot to do in that side to make it half decent to be able to string three and four passes together which I thought at times they found it very difficult to do yeah I thought it was a fairly towsy game at times but I think Aberdeen fans and Aberdeen as a club will take that every day of the week just now. Given where you are at this stage of the season, if they go on and take third, the difference financially that that means is huge. It then affords you to go out and maybe bring in one or two players that might have been out with your reach uh, without those finances. So I think at this point you, you take anything that's coming your way and then the, the, the aesthetics and the, the broader picture of it is something that you look at when you've got a bit more time. He's not had any time. He's gone in when the club have been in crisis and free fall he's gone in in the back of, of arguably one of the biggest shocks in Scottish football history going into a dressing room that had lost to, to Darvo taking over they had looked as though they were out of sight in the race for third I think all he had to do was stabilise things he's done that the next step once you've done that is to start looking at, at better quality football and better quality players but right now at this minute it's just about getting to third and, and cementing that by any means necessary yeah. how, how, how was Majoski's uh, goal no offside with his arm, did your arm no count? Did yeah your arm, arm counts but I think, there was a, I think there was a leg at the bottom end was playing him on um, Kevin, his arm was well if no, it, it, well, you, you can scroll your shoulder can't you so maybe it was his shoulder it was onside his arm was offside. He's talking. He's talking. Yeah, he's talking. Yeah, he about his hand was. Yeah, but, his hand was well offside. Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah, oh, but sorry. but I think you can't score with your hand. I think the line. No, I think the line. No, you can be offside. I think the line showed that there was a foot at the other end that just played him on. Um, don't ask me to start defending VAR, VAR on no. this because. No, that was the first thing I noticed. Well, I actually thought of it when his arm was there, and I thought yeah. that's the furthest. But apparently, there was another leg. 
uh, or an ankle somewhere. That's how ridiculous this is getting, isn't it? But nevertheless, listen, you can't take anything away from the goal was given uh, and Aberdeen won by two goals to nil. I can't see them not finishing third now and I thought Hearts were really going to be in the box seat. Yeah, I think they, I think that that wipes St Mirren and Hibs out of it and uh, gives Hearts a lot to do, to be honest. Now, he finished third, you're playing against Celtic Rangers. Um, Hearts are going to have to beat Aberdeen and hope that somebody else does them a favour. So Aberdeen strong favourites now to get that that third place and the riches that come with it. And as I said two months ago, you know, you'd have, I'd have given you fifty to one. They'd have finished third. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think Aberdeen will be? Uh, well, do you think Celtic will allow Aberdeen to buy scales? I, I don't know that there would be a place for them going back to to Celtic. I think it's they've got a lot of players that they could lose you've got Leighton Clarkson I don't know if they'll hang on to Duke I don't know if they'll hang on to Majofsky I think they, they could be facing a, a rebuild of their own this summer but I think William Scales will want to play he'll want to be going and he'll want to be playing first team football he's been in and around the Ireland squad as well I think at, at times this season I just I think he'll want to make sure that he's playing first team football and if Aberdeen come up with an offer that, that's suitable to Celtic, then I think it probably would be agreeable to both parties to go that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, big thanks to Didi, who was quite um, negative towards us on this. Um, it, it was on side. It was checked. Um, they draw the line, um, and Miofsky scored the goal. I, I don't know what more you want. Yeah, I, the arm can be offside. So you can't score with it. It can be offside. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what more you want to say. Call someone offside at the start of the season for pointing. When that was uh, the only one I can remember was there was a boy for Leeds about two years ago was it the boy the striker Bamford who pointed but they've that done away with that now I think yeah so well the, listen the, the the upshot of it all is Aberdeen scored Mayowski, um and they got their 2-0 win so full march to them what about Celtic Motherwell Ruffy I don't think <clears> too many of us thought that was going to happen but Again, you know, we were talking about what was the result of the day. I mean, Motherwell to, yeah. to get a point at Celtic Park was brilliant. Yeah, uh, and again, you know, the, the, the possession is just the same. Celtic had 75% possession. For, for this time, Motherwell defended particularly well. There's a lot of teams go there and don't have these, or have these stats at the end of the game. I thought they defended very, very well. And I think Celtic are missing Hatati. I think they're missing that midfield that was so potent earlier on. O'Reilly doesn't seem to do it for me when Hatati's not there. Uh, th there's, there's just a wee bit of something missing just now. Maybe it's the pressures of having to win every game. Maybe it's just the you know things in football. But they're still creating chances. You know, at the end of the game, you're coming in and going, well, the big boy has scored with a header, and if he'd done that and he'd done that, probably won the game. But no, I think all credit goes to Motherwell. Mm, why did they not take the chances? Here's Ange Postecoglou. We considered a really poor goal, which. It's unlike us, and then that seemed to filter through into our play after that. Where, you know, we're trying to chase the game a little bit, which we've been pretty good at not doing. But you know, it's only natural that um, you know the guys are going to want to try and make amends and score a goal. But I just thought we lacked a little bit of composure to do that. It's one of those seasons where, when you open your gob and you think about certain things, when you see a team placed at a certain point in the table and you think OK, I'll give you my opinion on where I think they're going and I, and I always go back to the game where it's, admittedly Stephen Hamill was in charge but St Johnson came to Fir Park on a Wednesday night I think you actually might have been there Alison uh, and they were rank rotten Motherwell they were absolutely woeful and I looked at the, the we got a great stat this, from our team in the background here who said on the 5th of February um, Motherwell were second bottom, only above Dundee United on goal difference. Mm. And the banner said, show some passion for the badge on your shirt. And at that point, I, I, and when I was watching them against St Johnson, they couldn't string three passes together. What a transformation. Van Veen's 24 goals for the season. I, th I don't think anybody's going to rule out him getting 30. No, and I think there was a point where they looked as though they were heading for the relegation fight. I think post-Christmas time, I thought they were... They were, they were in the mix and you you looked at them and thought, where are the points coming from? Where are the wins coming from? How are they getting out of it? I think Stuart Kettlewell's done a fantastic job. I think they've been hugely helped by the form of Van Veen. I think he knows himself he might have one big move left in him. Mm. Uh, and his stats this season would certainly invite a bit of attention, I think. Yeah, um, as far as uh, Kevin Van Veen is concerned, uh, will he be at Motherwell next season? This is his thoughts on it. Um, it doesn't hurt me to say, like, if there is somebody coming in and it's for me the right step because it could basically be my last move, that I will talk to the, the owners and the gaffer and have a conversation about that. that. That might be my last chance and maybe we can all have a, 
a green light and everybody's happy because if that's the case and they do get a certain money for me then I'm helping the club too because I'm 31 maybe they get younger people in like make a change and make my own step as well because um, that's important I think that's important but I would never just force my way out because I'm very happy here yeah. Yeah, he's happy and I don't think we can criticise him if he did take the move. He wouldn't be the first or the last to say, I'm 31, I want to I want to try and maximise my earnings, Ruffy. Yeah, I would have thought that, you know, the night uh, from the country he came from would be interested in him. You know, I think a lot of teams will be actually watching him as soon as you say 23 goals or 24 goals. That uh, just triggers an interest, you know, I, I don't know about going down to England. I'm not too sure about that, well, or the championship. Why, because anyway. he's not good enough? No, I don't think so. You know, I know he's scoring goals again up here. Everybody thinks, well, he's only scoring goals at Motherwell in that league. So I would, I would think going back to his Dutch, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I would think going back to back to Holland. I think he's done enough to impress them over there. Yeah, I'm just looking here at the other people who are scoring the goals. Uh, certainly in the league, you've only got a few who have managed to get, and it's not double figures here. Um, as I look down here, Stuart McKinstry's got four goals in the league, uh, and Callum Slattery with four. Other than that, um, there's nowhere, nobody anywhere near him. He is the absolute <laughs> star show for Murrow. Yeah, he's, he's a talisman there, and uh, if it wasn't for his goals, then I think they'd be fighting relegation. So... Listen, he's had a great season. I totally agree with him. He's 31, he's nearly 32. I think this summer, he's straight with Nyan's hot, and whether that's a player or a manager, whenever you're doing well, you know, you're getting plenty of media attention. You go and you get yourself a move, and he's, he's not going to beat Motherwell next season. There's no chance of that. He's going to be somewhere else. Um, <coughs> where I don't know where he goes. Um, I think he'll just go wherever the money is, and that could be. You know the Far East. It could be you know Dubai. I don't know somewhere over that way, um, and get you sell a big contract, China, and uh, and and get you sell one big last last move. That's what I would do. Yeah, of course you would because that's <laughs> that's the experience of your life, isn't it? It's almost as if Kevin Van Veen is exactly in the chance you had to join Motherwell well, or Dundee, <laughs> and money influenced you, and you went and joined the team at the bottom of the table. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if I was Kevin Van Veen and his agent, I'd be scouring the world to see what sort of deal I could get for the most money. Yeah, um, well, to be perfectly honest with you, sorry to Motherwell fans, um, Niall Kane as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Not going to be there. Niall will not be happy with you on that, but. Uh, as far as uh, Kevin Van Veen you can't fault him if he wants to move on and, and, and listen it's a job you want to earn more money um, give us your thoughts on that there's lots of players that could be coming and going and certainly it's a good time to be scoring goals because it, uh, it will attract attention yeah I think so I think what, his numbers this season would definitely invite a bit of attention and I think all the more so when you're doing it out with a, a Celtic or a Rangers. I think if you're if you're at Celtic or Rangers, people are expecting a minimum of 20 goals a season. I think that's probably what you're judged on when you're doing it at one of the one of the other clubs. I think it definitely raises your profile a good bit. And of course, Lauren Shankland uh, scoring the goals. He got a hat trick and a 6-1 win for Hearts at the weekend. I think Hearts thought they were going to be able to close that gap on Aberdeen with their emphatic victory on the Saturday, but Aberdeen had other ideas up at Petodre, Um and great credit to them for that. Um, as far as uh, Lauren Shankland, Stevie Naismith um, certainly happy with his return. He did. I think uh, as much as Shanks hasn't scored that many recently, it's been the whole team situation that stopped that. He's been getting one chance if that in a game. Um, and and the quality of that chance hasn't really been that high. We give him good chances, he'll score because he's a he's a real threat. He's progressed as a player over the years. He's a much more all round player as you've seen today. That he's intelligent to drop in or go in behind if he needs to. One of the key points that uh, Stephen A. Smith made after the game, Ruffy, was quite simply that he wants the team on the front foot. He wants them to be brave, to pick passes going forward and none of this, you know, square ball and backwards. Uh, and you could see that. That was in clear evidence against Ross County. Well, certainly when you play two forward men up front, I, I mean, we're all talking about Shankland. I thought Ginelli was the, the star of the day. I thought he was absolutely superb. He's got pace, he, he can finish for any, any distance, you know. But yeah, it's okay saying, yeah, we're all going to go forward against Ross County. Let's see if that's the style of play they play when they come up against the better sides. You yeah. know, it's okay saying that and the players buy into it. And if you get the results, great. I still, I mean, Tom doesn't think they'll get third. I think they will get third. You do? Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've been very positive about it, Ruffy. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. You're a wee bit negative there. I thought you might have given them the credit. Doesn't matter whether it's Ross County. You can only beat what's put in front of you. 
Yeah, listen, Hearts have, have been in a very, very poor run, um, but the bounce back in style, I agree with Stephen Naismith there. Lauren Shanklin's not been getting a lot of chances, it's not as if you're watching highlights or whatever, you're watching games and you're going, oh, he missed a couple of the... I, I can't remember him the last time with a chance, so when the whole team's not playing well, as a striker you suffer the consequences of that because you're not creating chances, you're not getting up the pitch. And, uh, and Hearts were, were superb, you know, for, for the first hour they absolutely blew Ross County away and it was a poor result for Ross County but also uh, the goal difference as well and that's, that, that can be massive at this time of the season to go, you know, get beat 6-1, you know, and that, that can be worth a point at the end of the season. It's going to be very tight down there and they now find themselves four points adrift for the teams above them and they go into the split. That's quite a sizable gap. Ross County, um, the manager, Malky Mackay, despite the fact they're at the bottom of the table and ready to play everyone around them, he, he's still quite calm about the situation. And just 15 years I've been a manager. <laughs> so I'm going to get that. You'll know that yourself. <laughs> Listen, um, I see them every day and um, I, I talk about evidence based. The evidence on today is we were we were really off it. But the evidence over the last few weeks of how we played, we played last Friday night against Aberdeen and were excellent. Um, we beat St Johnston two weeks ago up at McDermott Park uh, and we ran Celtic close the week before that. So it's all of a sudden they don't become we don't become a, a, a really poor team overnight and we had a bad day today and we've got to make sure we fix it, undoubtedly. I don't think they're out of it. I don't think they're out of it yet either. I think, um, I do wonder though about the implications of a result like that, just this week really having to pick them up. It's not a 2-1 or a 1-0, or a it was a hiding. Mm. I think it could have been, it was six going on ten at, at <coughs> points. I think, I do think about how fragile the mentality of the squad might be in the aftermath of that, just going into the split. So I think he's got a job in his hands, talking them up and restoring a bit of confidence this week, but I would agree with you, I don't think it's over yet, it's four points between the Kilmarnock, Dundee United and Kilmarnock are on the, on the same, I think Dundee United have a better goal difference, but four points is nothing really, it, it, you think a win changes the complexion of it entirely when everyone's got still got to play one another, um, but I think at the minute they would be your bet to go down. I never thought with a sellout at St Mirren that Kilmarnock would be able to go there and get their first away win of the season, Rafi, but that's the way it panned out. Yeah, it, did, it looked as if the St Mirren boys couldn't handle what was on the on the line, you know, and uh, give to give uh, Kilmarnock all, all the credit. I think they played particularly well, you know, it was one of the days it just never went for St Mirren, but when you're playing the game, and the most definitely we'd be looking at the other two games that were going to influence what was happening, I mean, they'd be sitting there knowing the way the game was up at Perth, you know, and they would know even they're getting beat two nothing. They would be hanging on to well, we're still going to be top six. But uh, I mean, I don't think anybody would be talking about them getting beat. All they'll be talking about is they're in the top six. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's the key to this because uh, Stuart, Stephen Robinson was quick to point that out. It's just a, a tremendous achievement for the players, for the club, and for also him as a manager. Yeah, for me, it's a, my biggest achievement. I know people say, oh, you know, you've got the cup finals and I worked in the European Championships in the last 16, but this has been the toughest challenge of my career in terms of dealing with the finances and what I believed the club was going to do and then we get hit with the news of the losses. So we've had to strip the club bare um, and everyone's stuck together and this group of boys have been amazing, fantastic. You know, we've got a lot of talented players but more importantly, we've got 2022 20, really, really good people and it's nice to see the good guys do well in football for once. And he will not have the budget of the rest of the top six. No, he won't. Uh, I, th I think it's a fantastic achievement. I really do. I think when you look at the budget that they've got this season, you know, we, we've seen the last set of figures. And I think they'd lost a million, a million and a half. You know, they're, they've not got a lot of money uh, at St Mirren at the time, uh, at the minute. So t for them to get in the top six is, is fantastic. Bumped into St Mirren fan yesterday, who follows him home and away. Stuart Kerr and his son Callum Kerr, who will probably be tuning in the now, and they've got their eyes on on Europe. They think they can still get into that European place. It might be fourth. I think could possibly get Europe as well. So. Listen, they're in the mix to get into European football, but for St Mirren this season to finish in the top six and push for Europe is, is a great season. It's a fantastic achievement for, for Stephen Robinson. It just increases, I think, his reputation, his profile. I think he, he done really well at Motherwell as well, and he's doing well at St Mirren. So, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a good young manager. Yeah, uh, picking somebody who's going for the drop is difficult. Ross County are in the mix. Uh, Kamarnock's still not out of it, but Derek McKinnon is certainly looking at things more positively. I'm gutted it's took us so long to win away from home but if you're going to start winning it's now and it, it means we're 
going into these post split games now um, on the back of having won away from home, which I think is important for the supporters, but more importantly for the players that they they um, they, they have that belief, short of confidence, beating a top six team, being a good team like St Martin. Stevie's done a brilliant job here, and no many teams win here. I think the Old Firm and maybe Motherwell first game of the season. Um, so the challenge to win the game today was always a, a big task, but. We've done it well, can he wait for the head-to-heads now, really looking forward to still having a scrap with these teams uh, run about us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kilmarnock suddenly, suddenly we've got everybody in the mix alley ready for the fight. They know it's, they know it's ahead, Kelly know what they've got to do. And of course, I'm just wondering about the experienced managers in there now that are all at the bottom end, Jim Goodwin, Malky Mackay, Derek McInnes. I think too, it can be important to get a win just going into the split. I think... Uh, you go in with a wee bit of momentum, a wee bit of belief. I think uh, I think that can be important. I think as well, it was important for Kilmarnock to get that away win. It gets that monkey off their back prior to a, a mass of five games now that will define their season. Um, Kyle Vassell, I think, is very crucial to Kilmarnock in the way that they've been playing. I thought he was excellent on Saturday. He went off with a hamstring injury. They've got a fortnight now before their, their next game, and you think if, if he was to go out the picture for a couple of weeks, I think he'd be a considerable loss. If he's in there, I think you would fancy him to be in and around a couple of goals. Mm, uh, St Johnston won, Hibs won. <laughs> so suddenly, suddenly, there's two big things that I have to talk about in this. One is if there were less than 3,000 fans, then Alison and myself and Ruffy were going to move out and you were going to do 10 press-ups on the couch mm-hmm. here. Um, but boy, those he was bussing them and the family was picking people <laughs> up. Um, so there was... 3,300 3, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 3,300 episodes. Yeah, I just made it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, you've, you've, yeah, you've been... I had a lot of messages over the weekend from people desperate to see me doing 10 press-ups on there, by the way. Especially because you said you were going to do them in your pants. Um, I mean, that could have been... No. That could have gone viral, roughly. Yeah. I mean, that was fantastic. Uh, nevertheless... They got a point, and that also stopped that little line that you delivered last week that he should go if he can't get mm-hmm. Hibs into the top six. So he should stay, Lee Johnson. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for him that he got in the top six. He, listen, other results went in, in their favour. I think that uh, obviously Livingston losing and, and St Mirren losing, I think there was it made for a great day for Hibs. We're obviously going to talk about the big talking point of the game, which was the, the red card for James Jago. Should which, it have been? No. Peter, it's a, it's a desperately poor decision. I can understand why Lee Johnson's raging at that. Um, there's a lot of Aberdeen fans, because I said last week that I thought that was a red card, a lot of Aberdeen fans saying, oh, it's the same ta- It's not the same tackle. It's not the same tackle as Shinny. Shinny, for me, is a red card. He goes in at pace, he goes in high. <coughs> I think the Jago tackle's not even a foul. It's not even a foul, Peter. It's not even a yellow card. So for the referee, uh, Napier, to give that a red card and VAR not to overturn it, I think it's astonishing, to be honest. And, I'm not surprised Hibs have appealed it. I think Hibs will, will win their appeal. They've got to win their appeal. Uh, and for me, it's just another poor decision. Um, thankfully for Hibs, it doesn't cost them a top six spot, but it might cost them a, a place in Europe at the end of the season because, you know, Hibs could go on and win that game with 11 men. You know, they hang on for a draw at the end, but it's a, it's a really, really poor decision. It's probably one of the worst decisions I've seen all season yeah. for a red card for that tackle. No surprise, Lee Johnson raging with the referee. The particular show was all about the officials today and that and that just on too many occasions. It, do you know what? It didn't even blow his whistle loud enough. There was times where the game was continuing to play because he wasn't blowing his whistle. He was thinking of blowing my whistle and he hasn't actually blown his whistle. Honestly, you're laughing, but like it's true. I could name three occasions where he hasn't blown his whistle either loud enough or at all Everybody's played on. Then he's having a go at everybody for playing on. Yeah, because you haven't blown your whistle. Honestly, <laughs> it's beggar's belief. Yeah, OK. I have to, I have to say, Craig Napier's not on the, the Christmas card list. But nevertheless, Scottish football for me is just the game that keeps on giving. Some of the post-match press conferences have been absolute comedy gold. And he's been at the forefront of a good few of them. He's been great copy. Oh. Do not knock it. It's, uh, Absolutely, I love it. It's, uh, uh, you know, it keeps us going. But I, I thought, I thought he had a point with quite a lot of what he said. I have to say, I think um, it, it was never a red card for me either. I agree with what Tam said, and and I think when you have such inconsistency 
and it can be so wounding and so damaging to teams and it wasn't there because of results elsewhere but if that had cost Hibs mm -hmm. a place in the cost him his job in the top six mm -hmm. and there's no one that knows that more than him, mm -hmm. more than him. Uh, so I think you can understand why managers can be absolutely incandescent at times <coughs> when decisions can be so so poor red card Ruffy yeah stone wall <laughs> Stone ball, he what? nearly broke the boy's leg. He dived, that was a rash challenge. And he, did he connect with the boy? Did he connect with the, the, the player? He's at it, isn't he? Did he connect with the player? What was the, what was the other player doing in the ground then if he never connected with him? Try to get him sent off. No, no, that was a red card for me. Yeah? The way the rules are just now, if you lunge in like that and you connect with somebody, it's a red card. Well, there you are. Don't worry about disagreeing with a legend. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, um, if you do, if you think it's a red card, you think <laughs> it's a red, it a red card. card. He's on oh, the sherry. Well, I bet you he doesn't the overturned. He's going to cost them a thousand pound. Well, that, that, that won't go overturned. Ruffy, give us the give us that look you normally give if you've got that kind of a condescending attitude. No one, right? yeah. no, no, that's what I'm saying. Right and that's what I'm saying. I just want you to practice, just in yeah. case. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, Ruffy. Yeah. He's, he's, Why? he's, he's not high. Then. It's not high, he's not pace, he wins the ball. It's not high, he wins the ball. How's the boy rolling uh, about in the run? Holding his, holding his he's, that's what happens when you get tackled. He try and get somebody sent off. Are you call the other boy a cheat then? Well, I'm, I'm talking as part of the game. It's clear. gamesmanship. Oh, yeah. game, if he catches you, you're down in the ground in agony. Yeah, but he didn't. So he didn't, he didn't, you'd think he didn't connect with him either? I don't, either. Think, I don't I think it was a, a red card. But listen, can we tell you something? That's the joy of this programme. I mean, everybody is absolutely... And there's Ian Doherty. <laughs> Ruffy's at the wind-up. Or is he just being stupid as usual? <laughs> Ian, that is <laughs> absolutely Ian. harsh uh, for the big man. Um, and uh, DPG says, Ruffy, spec savers are still open. Hurry up and get down there. I'll tell you, Hibs better win this. <laughs> Hibs better win can this. Imagine the, can you imagine this if they stick another game on for the few? <laughs> Oh, no, 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 that's no. even worse, oh. isn't it? But uh, hey, Ruffy, um, at least uh, at least you're getting your opinion across here. That's the joy of it all. Absolutely. Like you. Hey, Ian says. Like Ian VV says Ruffy's right. Um, so listen, Johnson fan. That's a uh, uh, and and Kevin says exactly, Ruffy. The guy was cheating. Um, and also, I like DPG says Ruffy's been on the Spanish rum again. Do you, is that something that you like, Ruffy? Uh, no, I like Spanish brandy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I know. number two. Serrano? I don't think you need to identify it. Nobody's sending you anything, Ruffy, to be honest with you. Uh, and the Mackenzie family, not just one of the Mackenzies, the whole family, Ruffy is clueless. So there you are. <laughs> I mean, some people have got a some people have got a strange tag on their name on <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> this is, this is, this is the entire family don't like you, Ruffy. The Mackenzies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The consensus around the dinner table. <laughs> and then uh, and then I golf uh, has just said R Ruffy GTF. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that means, Ruffy? Yeah, yeah, no, I think he knows what it means. Um, thank God you didn't use any profanities there, but nevertheless, listen, it's all about opinions. At least you'll get them on here. Uh, and of course, uh, we are bringing you lots of unique content. Don't miss Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock, I'll tell you. Uh, Neil Lennon is absolutely in top forum, uh, giving us lots of great content in a one-to-one -one, uh, with the former Celtic manager. He's talking about, of course, the pain of being sacked by Celtic. Goes over a few things that maybe you didn't know from that campaign, which is well worthy of listening to. And of course, the joy and the highs of etching himself into Ammonia Nicosia's history books and going to Old Trafford, walking out as a manager in the uh, in the matches against Manchester United. It's, it's a great listen. Looks back over Seville, talks about what he's going to do now uh, and offers his opinion on the big game coming up on Sunday at hand in the Scottish Cup semi-final. And it's well worth listening to his thoughts on Ange Postacoglu and Michael Beale. Nine o'clock in the morning, Wednesday, PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Uh, get on it and you can hear Neil Lennon in full. It is an absolutely fantastic listen. Um, anyway, full march to St Johnston. They got a point and uh, I think Stephen McLean is interested in only one thing at the moment. That's keeping the Saints in the league. I definitely. It's all control. The controllables, eh? we can't control other people. It's still in our hands. Uh, so, yeah, well, listen, like I say, uh, I like a challenge. So, uh, roll the sleeves up and let's go. Yeah, roll the sleeves up. Um, Stephen looks as if at the moment he's, he's so intense about it all because he'll be nervous. He'll want to do well for St Johnson. Yeah, I would like to think he's, he's a young guy. He, he would think he's got a chance of getting the manager. He'll be looking at uh, what Barry Robson's done and Kettwell and everything and he thinks if he could save them, 
he's got to be in the, the shout at the end of the day, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what the views are of the St Johnson board, what way they want to go down. Yeah, absolutely. Just before we talk about Dun United and Livingston, I've got to read out some of the comments, Ruffy, are absolutely brilliant since you've thrown that in there. Uh, Billy says, Big Ruffy is class, he just throws a grenade and sits back. Um, that's exactly what that's exactly what it is. A lot like Matthew Roberts who says, this is not the show for you, Ruffy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, always good uh, we are indeed James Dempster says any word on the SPFL split fixtures we are waiting on them they usually they, they wait till a point I mean they'll probably get them they've, they've, they've done by this morning if not before that they just wait to see if they can annoy the life out of everybody with the last <laughs> minute stuff don't they or, or they turn around and wait and say when is Sky Sports News uh, mm -hmm. going to get their maximum impact with uh, 37 viewers uh, and then they fire it out then don't they Ali? I think yeah I think there would have been a few <coughs> things to consider in the light of the weekend results about timing and taking into consideration some of the Police Scotland requests um, so I think there might have been a, a bit of shifting and changing to do. Yeah. Do we know the name of the robot this year it does it? A machine, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's it will. Well, it used to be. Uh, no, 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 let me clarify. <laughs> let me clarify. Let me, let me clarify that. You, you're going to get leathered. Uh, let me clarify that, Ruffy. There is a there is a, a kind of a mechanical formula yeah. to it, mm -hmm. but what happens is Ian Blair you used to then add the human element to the last part of it to try and, uh, you know, uh, adjust it, you know. So, what you're saying is when, they, when the thing. <laughs> Spat it out. He just went, no, we're not having that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, because basically, well, robot. Ba basically, basically, what you've got to do, Ali, is you've got to try and look at it, and and, and there are things that are stipulated, like Rangers must have yes. two home games against Celtic. You know, Hibs and Hearts again is in there, so the computer does yeah. not take that into there. But you're going to and tell me there's not going to be somebody no something. happy. Someone will have an Make extra away game. Absolutely, there's, there's always going to be that. There's always something. Like I'd that. feel for. Malky Mackay or, or Derek yeah. McInnes if it was away games I know. would you yeah It'd be pretty significant yeah absolutely Dundee United listen if we're talking about the great credit for and uh, I think Barry Robson fantastic for him over the weekend uh, Stuart Kettlewell absolutely superb um, and again you know Stephen Robinson has been talking about how great it is for St Mirren top six but what about Dundee United 2-0 over Livingston three consecutive wins Jim Goodwin yeah, brilliant. I think that uh, you know they were five points behind at one point um, before they beat Hibs, and nobody would have, would have seen them winning three games in a row uh, after being really poor all season. So, listen, their big players are starting to play now. You know, Jamie McGrath, Jamie McGrath's an Ireland international. You know, he's a very good player, great goal scoring record that St Murnley's proven in this league. And Stephen Fletcher's still a class act. You know, he's still a very, very good striker. So, listen, I, I think in terms of Dundee United, they just need to keep ticking away and keep winning games, and they'll get themselves out of trouble. Um, and for Livingston, I, I think they'll they'll rue the, the lack of form after the winter break. I think they were sitting in fourth after, uh, before the World Cup, and they've come back and they've they've fell down a slant, to be honest. And they, uh, and to just miss out in the last the last fixture will be will be gutting for the for David Martindale and, and their players and fans. But for Dundee United, they just need to keep winning and they they'll get themselves up the table. Yeah, I don't think anybody would have thought. I mean, if you'd actually turn around and said, by the way this guy will get sacked at Aberdeen and then he'll roll right into the Dundee United job and he will get a, a trick out of this Dundee United squad. People would have thought you were mad, but that's that's Scottish football. And, and even Jim Goodwin admitted that uh, the players had to go through a, a kind of mini pre-season. We've really worked on it in the last eight weeks. You know, we've pretty much given them a, a pre-season within the season, if you like. Um, it's something that I've always been big on as a player, and it's something that I'll continue to be big on as a manager. You know, I think, um, you know, players. The easy part of being a professional footballer is to be in the best possible condition you can be fitness-wise. There's no reason why uh, we can't be as fit as the next team. So, th but the guys have bought into it. That's the most important thing. You know, they haven't looked at the exercises that we've put on as punishment. They've uh, they understand the reasons behind it. Well, I have to say, great credit to uh, Jim Goodwin and even Stephen Fletcher saying he's the man, he should be getting the job. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's got a response from the players. I think they're quite clearly buying into whatever it is that he's trying to do. Uh, they're, they've managed to put a wee bit of daylight between themselves and Ross County at the bottom. Goal difference is better than Kilmarnock. I think uh, it looks a bit more positive than what it did a few weeks ago, but I think still quite a momentous 
five games ahead of them. Yeah, uh, of course. It's interesting, Peter. Sorry, him saying they weren't fit enough when they come in. Mm. That is a standard quote from every manager that comes in and takes over a set of players. Yeah. It's been ha- that, that thing's been said. You know, there's a wee bit of a conjecture about it on social media, but that thing gets said all the time. You know, and look at Aberdeen. Jim Goodwin left Aberdeen and Barry Robinson's went in there. And they, they're flying up the table, so were they not fit enough as well? So a lot of, a lot of people were thinking Jim was a big bit of order for saying that, but I think every single manager that I've played under and, and, and inherits a team of players doesn't think they're fit enough. Sometimes players just, don't, sometimes players just don't respond to manager, mm. they don't like it's the, not a day s- the style. Yeah. yeah, there are individuals like that. You know, yeah. I have to say that was not my way. You know, a manager particularly that I didn't really fancy. Yeah, but I never went out on a Saturday and never gave my best yeah. because he was the manager. He gave it your best. People, yeah, I gave it my best. But if there's people out there because they've got a manager they don't like him, they go, "Well, I'm not going to bother." Yeah, no, no. Listen, I don't, I don't get that. You only have to look at some of the Chelsea players with Mourinho, um, and of course, you're right to point that out, Ruffy. And that's our Alec Miller competition for next week. We'll try and uh, get that out there for you. Alec <laughs> Miller, is it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you didn't fancy him. Yeah. Some managers just don't fancy somebody. No, at a he didn't period fancy me. That was a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he went on to which, Liverpool. Which, which, had a good is, which is, yeah, I remember him taking in there. He took me into a hut. And where we were training, <laughs> no, we were training. He says, I never what we. I was, I was thirty six or thirty five or something. Like that. She says, I just wanted to ask you. I'm just here, just want to ask you where you think your future is. Yeah. I said, I'm going to try and get you a third World Cup. Yeah. And he didn't like that. Yeah. And you made it. Yeah. Absolutely, fantastic. Okay, uh, you need to let it go. You need to let it go now. You need to let it go now, Rafi. It's nineteen eighty-six. Since you went holiday, Mexico. What? Since you went holiday. You've got to be there, but enjoy yeah, it. Absolutely, you've got to be on holiday. Um, listen, uh, one thing I think is, I still think David Martindale at Livingston deserves uh, great credit, just basically because. Uh, on their budget for for Livingston not to be in a relegation battle, I think is a tremendous achievement this season. But it offers so much more, and they only had five wins from fourteen league games since January, and I think that's one of the big disappointments for David Martindale. As a group, we've got five games left to give as a group. Um, for me, it's a special group of players. You get really, really close to the players, and I'm going to lose some big players this summer. That will probably lead to a wee bit of the disappointment as well because we've got five games left as a group and then we start again. So I gave the boys a wee bit of time off just to, I think, less is more at this point. Um, you know, what to bring the boys in and, and put them through their paces during the week. So we'll get a wee bit of time off, regroup. Yeah, and I think the other thing that is probably making David uh, a, a little bit I don't know, reflective on it all is he knows all that team, he's going to have to rebuild another team. Yeah, I think he'll lose key players and I think he, he'll be well aware, of, well aware of that himself. I think we, we spoke about it last weekend, but he won't keep <coughs> Joel Newley, Devlin, these boys will, will go. Um, and I think that's just a cycle at a club like Livingston, the challenge is then to go and try and do it all over again. I think they've punched above their weight this season. I think he will be disappointed not to have got top six when it was within their grasp for so long. But I think it's just been so inconsistent over the last couple of months. I thought they were excellent last weekend. Uh, and then it dips again um, when they go up to Tannadice. I think they'll have been <coughs> disappointed too when you look and see that St Mirren lost. They could have went and asked a few questions of them. Um, but ultimately, I think you would have to say for a club of their resources not to be fighting for their lives at the bottom end of the table, I think you'd have to off your captain. Yeah, here's the table how it looks um, after all those games going up into the split, St Mirren, Hibs, Hearts Aberdeen, Rangers, then Celtic that's your top six and in, in, in the bottom end now it's uh, Livingston, Motherwell, St Johnston, Dundee United, Kilmarnock and Ross County. Ruffy um, you've had Kilmarnock going down yeah, since the start, still, you I, know, I know they were impressive at the weekend but I'm still sticking I'm waiting in the split, I'm waiting to see they get three away games and that'll just be the downfall for them. Yeah. I know they won at the weekend, but I think the other teams above them have now got, apart from St Johnson, Dundee United. I think it's split. The split's really important. Yeah. Really important, but I'm sticking with Kilmarnock. Okay, okay. Uh, who's second bottom? Ross County. Okay, Ali, for you. Ross County, bottom, and... I don't know that St Johnson are entirely out of it yet either. I yeah. think... Um, they should be, but I think it'll be interesting to see. But I think Ross County will go down, and I think it's one of St Johnson and the United Trickle Marnock. Oh, give me one of them then. <laughs> give me one of them. Give me one of them. 
I'm going to say... I'm going to say Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock. Skelfs. Uh, yeah, I was going to say there. To drag it out of it. Should you roughy? That's what happens. Indecision <laughs> creeps into your game, Ali. Um, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go Kelly and Ross County. Ross County are gone. They're, they're done. Yeah. 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 They're gone. And uh, I think St Johnston will be second bottom. Their playoffs. St Johnston. Yes. Well, there you are. Well, at least you're getting an opinion on this one. Um, Ali, just a quick one on the uh, women's game because the uh, Old Firm final set for uh, Hamden for the women after the, the, the semi-finals. What do you make of it all? Yeah, I think it's it's intriguing. I, I'm curious to see what kind of attendance it might draw in. It's the very first time that, that Celtic and Rangers in a women's capacity have competed in a final. Uh, I think there's very little between the top three sides. You've got Glasgow City just now at the top of the league, Celtic two points behind and Rangers three behind them. There's very, very little between the three of them. Celtic are the holders of this one. Um, and I think for a game of this magnitude, it's going to be played at Hamden for the first time. I think you would like to see as many people get along as possible and support it. It's the 28th of May. If memory, I, I think... That get that day will be bottom six games that are on. Yeah. Um. We don't know yet because we've not seen the fixtures come out yet. But you would hope that that Celtic and Rangers would would go along and, and lend it a bit of support uh, because I think it needs it. I think the women's game needs to to be constantly pushing to develop and expand. And if you're hosting a game at the National Stadium, you want to bring as big a crowd in as possible. I'm going to stick my neck out here. We're all going to have a guess, right? And the I tell you what we'll do. We'll have a guess and the crowd. Uh, on the crowd, and the furthest away, um, you know, buys a round of drinks at the PFA. Is that fe is that feasible, Ruffy, at the, yeah. the Player of the Year awards? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that? Well, I'm going to go thirty thousand. Wow. There you are. Wow. Celtic B Rangers women's final at Hamden. At Hamden. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. People would bite your hand off well, for, listen, for thirty thousand. Like, they, they would it, absolutely. Um, a Saturday at Hamden. There's no top Sunday. top six. A Sunday, uh, that you know, it could be a situation where you have. If the top, uh, the, the top, the, 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 the price, it is, the, is the top. Be ve it'll be very, very accessible. The, is the, the top, the top six are not going to be playing that day, are they? Not, not. Uh, well, we don't know because we've not seen the fixtures. Yeah. But I don't think so. What you tend to have is the top six games yeah. on the Saturday and the bottom six on the Sunday. We'll see if it's. Work. We'll see if it's the bottom six on the Sunday. And it's Celtic Rangers at Hamden. I'm going to go. I'm sticking my neck out. Thirty. I think 000. there are there, there's a lot of things around it. It's, it's there'll be another league game before it but, but the last time the teams met you had the 1-1 one, one draw you had Fran Alonso and Craig McPherson in the yeah. head but I think that whether you like it or whether you don't it's not an element you want to see but it raised the profile okay. of the yeah. game so yeah. the right, yeah. there, that was I can't remember the attendance off the, the top of my head it, it wasn't huge the record attendance for a women's domestic game is 8,000 yeah. that was uh, uh, Hibs and Hearts right. in November got just over 8,000 yeah. the, the women's it. cup final last year was just over 4,000 You'll be, I'm able going to buy, say, you'll be able to buy tickets on the day, won't you? I don't know. This is this has been a concern that it, no, for, for the weekend. Surely that comes to God. Down, <laughs> that comes down to the structural <laughs> organisation of it. Spice and Coke, Malibu and Coke. Yeah. Malibu and Coke, Spice Rum and Coke. Yeah, I'm having a double. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, what are you going for there? Ali's having a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're going to get back. Honestly, there's that many people hate you now. It's unbelievable. I would say anything over 10,000 would be seen as a massive success. Give me a figure, people. Alison. I would say about 12,000. 12,000? 12,000? Mm -hmm. 12, yeah. Right, okay. Um, well, listen, I'm being anything optimistic. Anything over than 10, I let's, think. Let's really fantastic. push it this week, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you going for? I'm going for 18. 18,000? Well, 18,000 is a good right, number. I'll go for 15,000. 15,000? Yeah, I think there's a great crowd. <laughs> I yeah. think 30, uh, you're hoping that people get in for nothing. Well, I, no, I'm, I'm, ho I'm hoping that the Rangers and Celtic fans look at it and say to themselves, you know, there's one semi final that's coming this week. I'm hoping they look at it and say to themselves, well, there's nothing on. It's a brilliant sunny day. I'm hoping they can pay at the gate or go up there and buy tickets on a, a ticket kiosk. You couldn't that at would the make semi final. Sense. You couldn't at the wow, semi that would be I, absolutely that, stupid, yeah, wouldn't it? it, it yeah, there, there's a big question mark to be asked over that about how the women's game go. promotes itself. You've got to make it as easy as possible for people to get along and to You've go. You've got to be able but, to buy uh, a ticket. Yeah, I think it, it's an intriguing one. I think you would like to see it well attended and I think you would like to see both sets of fans turning out for them because if you look at what women's attendances are getting south of the border, 
uh, on the back of a very successful European Championships. You'd like to see some of that come into Scotland. The other thing you'd say is when Scotland went to the World Cup in, in 2019, you had a crowd of just under 18,000 at Easter Road for that friendly against Jamaica. So there's an argument to say that there is a level of interest here. You've got to try and buy into it and you've got to try and promote it. Yeah, DPG says you do know that Peter has got short arms and long pockets, Alice, and you have no chance of a double. Uh, DPG, you will never believe this, but this mob, Ruffy, honestly, in 10 years of PLZ, what do we have? We have an end of season party. Everybody's taken to the PFA. There's a Christmas party. Need I say more, Ruffy? Yep, no, we like a night out, basically. That's the bottom line. <laughs> When's Hughes night out, by the way? Oh, there's Hughes night out as well, Ali. Look at your smile on your face, because you, you're bottling crash for a wee while there. I hadn't but uh, Hugh, Hugh has been tailed off all season. Well, let's He's have a look at the predictor table. He, he never done Aberdeen. He won. He done a draw. Unbelievable feature. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Shuggles have done Aberdeen. Uh, I mean, the predictor table <laughs> is... Uh, there it is. Ruffy's on 291. Tam McManus on 281. I'm on 275. Ali's on 263. 251, Tam <laughs> Cowan. And then Hugh... <laughs> Two one six. That, that's gone. great. Yeah, performance. He's gone. Do you know? Uh, you know, if Hugh had predicted any Rangers win this year, <laughs> that he could have so won the thing. Oh, you're talking about like two points for a correct score. They don't have to be the correct. Uh, just yeah. a, a win. Yeah. Two that many. Maybe many games the Rangers won. Many games of Rangers won in the league. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Tell us. You, you I would say. That, yeah. I would say about oh, twenty-five. Yeah. So that's thirty points he's thrown out the door. Oh, that's incredible, isn't it? Fifty points he's thrown out the door. Hey. We've won 25 two. games, two points. Two points, yeah. Absolutely. Two points, he'd be uh, in the lead. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing about it, you know. So he's uh, he's really let it go. And he's <laughs> 14 wins at home and 11 wins away. So 50 points he's done himself. He's done himself out of. And that's not even taking into consideration he could have got a correct score in amongst them. Yeah, absolutely. Which is five points. Listen, I don't know if you can hear Thank that. You, Hugh. Can you hear that before the the, the program goes off? That's. That's the sound of Arsenal completely and utterly blowing the English Premier League, Ruffy. I think we're all got eyes on this game. Wednesday. I, I don't know how they, they approach it. You know, I was listening to the other game and said they'll just, they'll just sit in and try and hit Man City in the break. What? Yeah, but uh, I don't think that's going to work. No. no. Uh, Alison, no. they've blown it, haven't I they? I think they've blown it. I think they've absolutely blown it and I, think, uh, I don't think they'll win on Wednesday night. Yeah, and what about Tottenham, by the way? Who in the right mind takes that job? I sat and watched the Newcastle game with my son-in-law, who's yeah. from Newcastle. Of course, he's one of those. They are Jordy. absolutely ecstatic with what's happening in yeah. Newcastle. Did, did you now. see the videos of the Tottenham fans posting 20 minutes in, we're going home? Yeah. And I didn't see it. I was raging. actually I was, I was playing golf yesterday afternoon, but I had alerts on my phone and it kept buzzing every two minutes, <laughs> in the first 20 minutes. And I was telling the guys I was playing with 2-0, 3-0, you're joking, 4-0, 5-0. Um, you know, Harry I think Kane, I think, Con, I think Con, stay there. he's got to get out of there. He's, he's got to get out of there. They are not they are not a team that's going to win anything at all. And Conte was right. Conte was right when he left. And this is a this is a club you come to for money and for no pressure. They're no used to winning trophies and you know they want and Conte's a winner. Mourinho was a winner. He get chased. I don't know who takes that job, but you're not going to win it in Tottenham under that. No, league. absolutely. You, you need to clear the place out, by the way, and then have that real... Start with Levy, start with the guy at the top. Yeah, OK. Out. There you are. Um, so, th- I hope you're listening. Owners don't usually go out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was just about to say to you, Robbie, you're right. I'm going to sack myself. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you. Is the treble on for Man City? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think they're beginning to look the part now. Yeah. 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 I think so. I think, well... There's it's only one team that can stop them, Ali. Only one team that can stop them for the treble. Real Madrid. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think Real Madrid will stop them. Yeah. Um, but you know. I think Real Madrid might. I, I, I fancy Real Madrid. I think might go and win the, the, the Champions League. But I just think with Haaland in there, you just, you've always got a threat. You've always got something. Yeah, and you've also got Benzema. Um, I must admit, though, Rafi, uh, Man City dismantled Sheffield United. But I really felt for Brighton. I wanted them. I wanted them to win. They were the best side on the day. Yeah, I have to say that. You know, and uh, we were speaking about it the other day. There, what a, a absolute bummer that would have been for Gordon Smith. Yeah. Because if they'd have got the final, Gordon, <laughs> <laughs> Gordon would have been the celebrity of Brighton. Yes, for the day. Why not? And, Gordon uh, deserves. He's got a great career right, right there. But the penalty kick. Oh my yeah. God. That's oh, just a howler, isn't and it? By, and by the way, all, all, all the Brighton players had to do was hit the target. Because David De Gea didn't guess right once. I he know. was just jumping at the road, everything. Mm-hmm. And it was going to take somebody to fire it over the bar for them to win. Exactly. Uh, listen, the quiz question. 
How many did you say for Neil Lennon, player and manager? How many trophies? You said 24. 20. I said 24. 24, what 22, you, 20. You said 20. Uh, the answer we were looking for was 21. Oh. And for the benefit of uh, uh, Paul well, Brady, who was watching the programme at the weekend, when we put the... Uh, uh, we put the question over how many did Mourinho win in his time as manager, not including Charity Shields. It was 23, just in case you missed that. I know you said you missed it at the yeah, weekend. Yeah. Um, but um, nevertheless, uh, if you got 21 trophies, uh, then congratulations to you. If you get a chance, don't forget, Wednesday, 9 o'clock, um, Neil Lennon, uh, one-to-one, and he's talking about uh, a number of things that I think you will enjoy listening to his chat. He's in fine forum, looking to get back into management, talking about the days at Celtic, and of course his relationship with the Celtic fans. He's also discussing uh, his time at H- Hibernian and Ammonia Nicosia, and it's 20 years since Celtic were on that way to Seville. He discusses that match, whether he's actually watched it since then, uh, and there's lots of great comment. It's well worthy of you. Your consideration. It's on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. We're giving you more and more content. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, you'll get all the notifications of when we have new content up there. Great today uh, to chat to Ruffy, Alison and Tam McManus and of course uh, you never know one of us might be buying a round at the PFA Player of the Year Awards. If you're going to the Women's Cup final, get out there, take your family, your cousins, your best mates, your friends and we'll see you tomorrow on the show. Thanks for watching.